Chapter 4 What do you mean you were bailing on me? You knew I was babysitting Brad tonight while my dad up, upstate on a conference. You promised you'd stay over. Lee sighed into the phone, and I knew he was tugging at his hair. I know, Shelley. I'm sorry. I'm a pathetic excuse for a best friend. Oh, come on, Lee, please. Rachel will survive without you for one evening. I knew I sounded whiny and bratty, but it really felt like ages since Lee and I had properly spent any time together, just the two of us hanging out. We were only a week into school, but between Rachel and his new spot on the football team, and actual schoolwork too, of course, I felt like he was slowly drifting away from me. I was trying hard not to be mad at him about it. He was totally head over heels in love with Rachel. He was busy. I understood that. I was happy for him. But still, what about me? Lee hadn't replied. He was feeling bad, and I knew he was probably trying to figure out what to s way to say I'd rather spend my evening with my girlfriend than you, without sounding like a jackass. I just miss you, I said, my voice sounding small. I cringed. I sounded so pathetic. Honestly, how crazy do I sound? I miss you. I saw him practically every day. We just don't hang out so much anymore. I know, Shelley. I'm sorry. Can't you come over at least for a little while? I can't. I sighed. I'll make it up to you, I promise. We'll go shopping tomorrow. Shoe shopping. I'm buying lunch. Hmm. It didn't make up for it at all, but I knew how hard he was trying. I felt myself caving quickly. I always did, when it came to Lee. And I'll find you a replacement co-babysitter, he offered. Is dessert included in this lunch? Dessert or starter, not both. Sold, he laughed, but then said quietly, I'm really sorry. It's just, you know, I get it. It's okay. It wasn't, but it had to be. Have fun. Say hi to Rachel for me. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, El. You were the best. Hanging up, I fell back onto my bed. Brad would be home from soccer practice in about 20 minutes, so I decided to relish the peace and quiet while it lasted. Soon enough, I heard Brad yell goodbye to the boys piled into the back of the minivan, dropping him off, and him running toward the house. I went down to meet him. I scored a goal! I ruffled his hair. Awesome! Then I pushed him away at arm's length before he stepped inside. Okay, little guy, cleats off, straight in the shower, try not to get mud everywhere, but cleats, shower, go, go, go. I knocked the dried mud off his shoes before following the trail of muddy laundry up to the bathroom door. On the other side, Brad was belting out some rap song I kind of recognized from the radio but with most of the lyrics wrong. I was sure that whatever the words were, they didn't mention grilled cheese. I was right by the front door, at the bottom of the staircase, holding the filthy bundle of Brad's laundry, when the doorbell rang. It was probably Cam or Dixon, sent in Lee's stid to make my evening of babysitting more bearable. It was definitely too late for Girl Scout cookies. I fumbled at the latch with my shoulder, pressing my elbow down on the door handle, and once it was unlocked, I nudged the door open with my foot. What are you doing here? Levi raised his eyebrows. Nice to see you too. I blushed. Sorry, I just... I wasn't expecting you. Lee called me and said you wanted some company babysitting your brother, so here I am. I did text you to say I was heading over. Oh, sorry. I didn't hear my phone. A couple of seconds passed in silence. Levi took in the bundle of muddy clothes in my arms, then looked back at me expectantly. 
He was wearing a thin, waterproof coat with the collar turned up against the fine drizzle that was falling. His hair was damp, the curls flat. It was a cute look on him. Noah always managed to look hot whenever he got caught in the rain. I, however, usually looked like a frizzy mess. Can I come in? Oh, right! Yes! Of course! Of... Sure! I stepped aside, making way for him. He brushed his sneakers off on the welcome mat before coming inside. I gestured with Brad's soccer clothes. I'll be right back. I just need to sort these out. The living room is just there. Make yourself at home. Thanks. It was amazing how Levi had integrated into our group so easily. He shared a lot of the same interests and had the same kind of sense of humor as the rest of us. It really didn't feel like we'd only known him a week. Levi was charismatic. He was even getting to be kind of popular. But we still didn't know that much about him. His social media was pretty void of information, so most of what people had to say about him seemed more like a rumor than fact, which only made people talk about him even more. He didn't talk about himself too much, either. The mystery only seemed to add to the novelty of him being a new kid at school, and an attractive one, too, objectively speaking. But he was easy to hang out with, and he made for a decent study partner when Lee ditched me for Rachel. When I got back from the laundry room, Levi was stretched across the couch, flipping through TV channels. We've got ravioli for dinner, I told him. Sounds good. I put dinner on and fetched us both drinks. I found Levi had settled on the Lego movie. I put our drinks down on the coffee table and sat at the other end of the couch. Brad came downstairs soon after and did a double take upon seeing some strange guy there. He looked at me uncertainly, and I pulled a face at him to warn him to be nice. Ah, uh, hi. Levi turned to look at my younger brother, hovering in the doorway, and smiled easily. Hey, you must see Brad. Yeah, you weren't Lee, though. Brad, that's not polite. Levi was laughing. I'm Levi. The new guy? I may have mentioned to you a, a couple times, I said by way of explanation to Levi. Lee couldn't make it tonight, Brad. Sorry, bud. I know you were looking forward to seeing him. What about the other guys, like Cam or Warren? Warren's fun. He taught me how to swear in French. Mercy, See? Brad! What? I'm just asking. Brad started to take a seat and then realized we were watching a movie. He scowled at me. You promised me this morning I could play video games. I know, but now we are watching a movie. Come on, you like this movie. You know, with Batman and stuff. It's really awesome. I sang. Those aren't the lyrics, L. You know what I mean. This is so unfair, you promised. He sounded just like I had earlier, wanting to lean on the phone. I only felt a little guilty, though. I mean, Levi didn't want to sit here watching my brother play games. At least a movie was better entertainment. Or so I thought. What video games? Levi asked my brother. Brad's face lit up, and I could see him wondering if he could win Levi over to his side. My dad says I'm not mature enough for any of the games of guns and stuff. You know, like Grand Theft Auto. But I've got some really cool racing games. He started naming some of his favorites, meaning the ones he was best at. And Zelda. I have Zelda. I don't mind playing with you, as as long as your sister says that's okay. Levi turned to me, waiting for approval. Eyebrows knitted together. I mean, 
If you've got homework to do, you honestly don't have to, I muttered quietly so Brad could, wouldn't hear. Better than painting nails, he said. My sister loves giving me a manicure. Oh, can you play, please? My eyebrows shot up. I couldn't help it. If Brad was saying please to me, his big sister, then he must have taken a liking to Levi. I made a mental note that he would always be my new babysitting buddy from now on if Lee wasn't three. I, well, I, I don't see why not. Good luck trying to beat my high score, though. Even Lee hasn't managed that. So, while Brad set up his console and loaded a game, I left them to it, deciding to finish redrafting my essay on the Cold War that was due on Monday. I opened the Word document titled College Application Essay, but after staring at the blank page for a few minutes and not being able to think of something to fill out, fill it, I closed it back down. College was all anyone seemed to talk about at school, and even though I knew I wanted to go, I had no idea what I wanted to major in or what I really wanted to do after college. Everyone else seemed to know which wasn't really helping me deal with the stress of not knowing. But I felt sure that once I'd written my essay, everything else would fall into place. I'd figure it out. I'd be fine. It had to be. But this evening I gave up on my essay, too distracted by listening to Levi cracking jokes and Brad getting competitive. Levi glanced over his shoulder at one point to flash a grin at me, and I found myself thinking how unlike Noah's crooked smile it was. There was something less daring, less exciting in Levi's smile. It was more like, like he knew a secret, and I knew it too. I'd heard girls at school talking about his smile. It was pretty charming, I guess. Even if my brother had been looking forward to hanging out with Lee, he quickly became a fan of Levi, just like the rest of us had. Brad didn't even complain when I snuck some vegetables into his plate with his ravioli. He was too busy chatting with Levi about soccer and asking him about lacrosse. He even went to bed more or less on time, after ten minutes spent arguing with me to stay up longer because Dad wasn't home yet and it wasn't even a school night. I've already let you stay up half an hour longer than Dad would have, I exclaimed, for the billionth time. Dad won't be home for another hour, though. Come on, Al, don't be so uptight. Lee taught you that word, didn't he? This is so unfair. Tell her, Levi, tell her to stop being so uptight, he said, trying to rope his new best friend to his side. Sorry. But I'm with your sister on this one. Brad scowled, but grumbled in defeat. Fine. Thanks for playing video games with me, he added, then mumbled good night and stomped up the stairs to bed. Don't forget to floss, I called after him, even though I knew he wouldn't. Then I sank back down onto the couch next to Levi. Thanks for that. For all of that tonight. For all of tonight, I usually appreciate that. Uh, I really appreciate the help. I thought you said he was a total nightmare when you were talking about him in school. Let me tell you, you haven't even seen nightmare children. Do you want to see my sister when she's hungry and tired? She gets so shrill and it's totally unsufferable. I'm telling you, I'd switch any day. Wait till her... PMS kicks in, you too, and too, but you'll be in college by then, right? Right, he mumbled. Thanks, though, really. The only people Brad really listens to are Lee and Noah, and that's only because he completely idolizes them from growing up with them around. Levi nodded, and after a pause said, So, you and Noah... Were you guys friends before dating? I know you and Lee are close. 
I scrunched up my face, my face up. Not exactly. I mean, kind of. We were when we were all little kids, but then we drifted apart when he went to middle school. How did you end up together then? Stop me if I'm being rude. I'm trying for politely inquisitive. He grinned. Just, nobody's really talked about what happened with you two. It seems kind of taboo or something. Not taboo, I said. It's just that not everyone knows the whole story. It's kind of complicated. He shrugs. I've got all night. Or at least until your dad gets back and you kick me out. I smiled and tucked my feet up on the couch underneath me. Well, it all started with a kissing booth. And when I was done, Levi simply said, It's nice that Lee forgave you and that you two are still such good friends. I never had a best friend like that. I mean, I had best friends, sure, but not like you've got Lee. I nodded, because I wasn't sure what to say. Times like tonight, I felt like I didn't have Lee much at all. We both turned back to the TV, some documentary on the History Channel, and after a few minutes, my cell phone rang. Noah. I answered, mouthing one sec to Levi. Hey, I just got in from my party. I wish you were here. I've got this bed all to myself, and it's incredibly lonely. I miss you. He was slurring his words a little, and yawned long and loud. I blushed a little. Much as I'd like to be there, and... Um, cuddle up with you. Can I call you back in a second? Everything okay? Yeah, I just... Have company. But Levi was standing up. It's okay. I should probably head off now anyway. I promised my mom I wouldn't be home too late. I nodded and told Noah to hang on just a sec as I walked Levi to the door. He slipped on his coat and picked up his car keys. I'll see you at school on Monday? Yeah. Thanks again for tonight. I'll repay the favor sometime. He smiled brightly. I'll hold you to that. Back in the living room, falling across the couch with my feet dangling over the armrest, I clicked to turn the call into a video one. Noah appeared on the screen, lying on his side with his handsome face half smooched into a pillow. I couldn't help but smile. Seeing him, it made my heart swell. Hey, sorry. Who was that? Noah's voice was more awake now, but still a little less than sober. Levi. The new guy, Levi? No, the old Levi. I rolled my eyes. Remember I said I had to babysit Brad tonight? Because my dad's not back too late? And Lee was supposed to hang out with me? Noah propped himself up on one elbow so I could see him better. He wasn't wearing a shirt. I wished he was here, or I was there. His mouth twisted to one side. Let me guess. He ditched you for Rachel. Yep. But he's taking me shopping tomorrow as... as... Pen sis, and... buying lunch. Anyway, he sent Levi as a replacement co-babysitter to keep me company, which was okay, actually. He's a pretty nice guy. Funny, easy to talk to, you know? Everyone seems to like him, I smirked. The girls definitely seem to like him. He's got a lot of admirers, the way I hear it. Should I worry I've got competition, Shelley? Even though his voice was slow, his tone was unmistakably teasing. His blue eyes glittered, even though the phone screen, even through the phone screen, Oh, totally. He laughed. How was the party? All right, I guess. Then, I miss you. I miss you more. Nuh-uh. What are you going to do about it? 
You can't tickle me into submission all the way from Massachusetts. Oh, believe me, when I see you next, I'll have to pack in weeks of tickling you are owed. I grinned, laughing softly. We carried on talking a little about college, school, our friends, though Noah seemed to ask more questions than he answered. I got the feeling he was avoiding talking to me about something, but it was such a small, silly, nagging thought that I chose to ignore it. I was too happy seeing him, talking to him. I thought about confiding in him how it felt like Lee and I were drifting apart, but I didn't want to risk it getting back to Lee and upsetting him, so I decided it was better to keep that to myself. As we spoke, in hushed voices, I felt an ache somewhere, inside. Not exactly my chest or my stomach, but just a deep, rooted, all-over kind of ache. I missed him so much. More than anything, I wished I could be curled up next to him with his arms around me, the rise and fall of his chest beneath my head, his fingers teasing my hair. I watched his lips moving as he talked, thinking about how much I wanted to kiss him. Noah's voice got slower, heavier as we spoke, and he sank back down into his pillow. A car drew up outside. Dad was home. I should go, I said, just as Noah yawned again. My dad's back. I'll talk to you tomorrow. I love you. I love you too, he mumbled, half asleep. Sweet dreams. He hung up, then, and left me smiling and feeling fuzzy inside. And I walked out into the hallway, just as my dad was hanging up his coat. Oh, bud, you didn't have to wait for me to get in. You know I always do. How was the conference? He just pulled a face. Sounds like you guys had a wild time. He smiled tiredly. As always. How was Brad? An angel, I said, with no hint of sarcasm, and quickly explained that Levi had come to keep me company. Brad loved him. I think this Levi guy is going to have to be my new co go-to babysitter. Come on, it's late. Way past your bedtime, bud.